Hey, 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 usually I do stuff like this at the end of the episode, but we'll start in here at the beginning of the episode just to make sure we get it in. Um, you can come hang out with us in the Patreon for just $5, and that's all the unedited video versions, completely commercial free with all of the bloopers included to each episode. And also we have in there classes and meditations and journaling exercises and just, you know, all the extra content. And it really helps me out. Oh, also rate and review if you like it and share with your friends. Love you so much. Thank you. Now on to the show. Hey guys, this is Savannah from earthandwater.co. Today I'm here with Kirsten Wild, who is a fellow yogi and meditation teacher. I love your last name. Thank you so much. And it has Definitely a Definitely one that I chose. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was really yes. cool. Yeah, so I'd love to just actually dive right into that. So again, yeah, my name is Kirsten and Wild is a name that I chose for myself. So it's actually my third last name. Um, right around this time that I was having this kind of awakening within myself, right? I left a codependent relationship where I had just kind of lost my sense of self, denied who I was, my own needs, and truly lost myself in that when I decided to make the hard decision to get divorced. My lawyer said, okay, do you want to change your name back to your maiden name? And I was like, actually, no, I don't, because that's not who I am anymore. You know, that was a different person. And I wanted to really choose something that would remind myself of the choices that I've had to make and the the choices to choose myself so that, you know, in future situations, I, I had that visual reminder of, hey, choose your wild, choose your authentic self, choose you. Um, and so I made wild my last name. That's beautiful. Not everybody gets to, I mean, we, we all could change our names to whatever we wanted to, and that would be really cool, but, you know, we get attached to it and stuff. That's a whole thing. But I really like that you chose Wild because I feel like we really, you know, women especially, not just women at all by any means, but we get told to tone it down and calm down and suppress ourselves and a Mm -hmm. lot of us take that to extremes and it's really hard to get in touch with ourselves when we've constantly been told especially as children to hush hush and tone it down and so but finding our authenticity does mean embracing our wild side right absolutely and definitely not just like yeah, I think I think a lot of times people tend to think of this word wild, right, as this like crazy and like untamed. Mm-hmm. But really, that is what it is. It's just our natural sense of self. So it doesn't have to be this like dark side of ourselves or like out of control or anything like that. It's just really our true authentic nature. Thinking back to, you know, like a wolf or something like that. They're just going to be who they are. They're going to claim their dominance and they're going to be who they are in the world. And um, I think like you mentioned, like throughout childhood, what we learn there, what we learn from society, all that stuff tries to like put us in a box and how we are supposed to behave. And so wild doesn't even necessarily mean like not behaving, but it's just being our true authentic self without all of those, those barriers and those expectations of everyone else. Yeah. Cause I mean, like at the end of the day, we are still a part of the animal kingdom, right? Exactly. Yeah. We like to pretend that we're, you know, in houses and all of that, but it's, well, we're still part of the whole cycle and definitely. I think we do ourselves a lot of disservice by uh, trying to section ourselves off away from the wild that is, you know, nature in and of itself, not only in houses. And um, so a lot of people, you know, go touch grass has been a thing that's popped up a lot on the internet lately, because it's so true. You know, you, so many of us are so disconnected from that natural state and, we don't, you know, sometimes it leaks through because you know, we're all masking all the time. We're all putting on our uh, best show for politeness or manageability or approval, that external approval that we all strive so hard to get. And um, so we don't know how to manage our wild side without the suppression of it a lot of times Mm -hmm. so you know we suppress it and suppress it until it just like a caged animal comes breaking loose at our peak emotional states Mm -hmm. and it does everybody a disservice ourselves the people around us because for a lot of reasons 
And I think the more that, like you mentioned, the more that we kind of suppress it and the more that we try to hide away from it, the more it's just kind of growing inside of us, not going away. Like that wild woman within all of this, she's there. She's re- she's waiting for us to answer that call, right? She's ready to like take control and be like, be you, right? But the more that we do suppress it, like you mentioned, yeah, it's always there and it's going to, it's going to find its way out. And, and maybe it's in a big profound way for you. Maybe it, you know, comes to a, a, a tipping point, right? Or maybe it starts to slip in slowly while be, by being able to bring that consciousness and that awareness in. Did you ever find yourself, uh, were you always more open to your wild side or were you more of like a suppressed side, like timid or? Yeah, I I think that definitely as a kid, I was more in tune with my wild side. I think that we all are, right? Because we're yeah. we're kids and we don't have the all that stuff happening yet, but, um, I was definitely always shy and definitely always, uh, looking to, I had one older sibling, my brother, and he was actually the one that was always getting into trouble and always pushing the boundaries and always like, Hey, this is my thing, or this is how I want to do things. And I don't want to follow the rules. And so I think growing up, I watched that and I saw my parents' disappointment and I saw him get in trouble and I thought I'm going to do that. And I, Already, I think as women, we tend to be more people pleasers, but already I started to step into that role pretty young. Okay, what can I do to make sure that nobody's ever mad at me, make sure that nobody's upset with me, make sure that I follow the rules. And that's pretty much how I lived for a lot of the time. And then when I found myself in a codependent relationship, so my ex-husband is an addict and I pretty much alongside the people pleasing, then I started to diminish anything that was of value to me because I sacrificed all of that to try to help and encourage and support another human being that that's where I really lost myself. And so when I had the opportunity to reconnect once again, that's why, again, I I chose that name because I don't want to ever lose that again, because now I've seen power of, of really reclaiming your wild and I don't want to go back. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a freeing thing when you finally figure out how to step into your power. Uh, I also, I completely shut down as a kid. Um, I probably was your brother (laughs) (laughs) in the sense I was never a people pleaser and I didn't understand people pleasing. I didn't understand how, and you know, I'm like, I'm totally neuro spicy and that's why but uh, I don't always catch social cues for sure. sure. So I definitely didn't understand why people would say one thing and then do another. And then that just didn't make sense to me. And then people would act one way towards people and then like nice and like they liked them. And then as soon as those people walked away, they'd be like, can you believe she, can you believe they? And I was just like, Mm. why are you playing pretend to their face? I don't understand. But because I had all of these social conflicts that I didn't understand, Mm -hmm. I was in trouble all of the time. So, and I couldn't figure out how not to be. So I just completely shut down and was like, Mm. well, the only safe place is for me to just be still and be quiet because mm. anything else is going to uh, ramp up negative emotions in all of the people around me. So I just completely shut down. And it took me probably my late 20s is when I started embracing the sides of me that, well, it was probably before that when alcohol was involved, but like mm-hmm. soberly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because we all get uh, a little wilder when we get that liquid courage to be ourselves, sure. right? Yeah. <laughs> Not ideal. Finding the finding the balance between being your wild self versus being an unmanageable self. But, you know, that's society and culture. They don't want us unmanageable. Um, just was coming to my mind as as you're talking, as we're thinking, right? If If we start thinking about like being your wild and, and, claiming yourself, this doesn't mean that we go around like walking around just doing whatever we want without any disregard to other people. Certainly we don't want to step into that people pleasing role, but as I'm sure you're probably familiar with um, in yoga, like the foundations of yoga comes down to ahimsa, right? Which is kindness and nonviolence. And so how do we reclaim our wild? How do we be exactly who are, who 
we are true to ourselves while still being kind in the world and nonviolent and not stealing from others, right? So it's not that we're just walking around, uh, you know, spraying whatever we want to out into the world at any time. We're still coming from that place of of wholeness and kindness and and nonviolence there as well. Yeah, well, I think uh, that's more of the chaos than the wild, you know. True, true, yeah. Wild is embracing your natural state. Mm-hmm. Whereas, uh, you know, some people do actually want to walk around here causing chaos. And those those mm-hmm. are the ones that uh, I actually married into a family of those. And uh, they're fine to an extent yeah. until they're very yeah. not. But mm-hmm. so yeah, there is definitely a um, discretion involved when you're embracing your wild natural state most of most of us in our wildest most natural healed state is kind and compassionate and considerate and loving and all of the good things in the world I really do think that human nature in and of itself it has all of the potential in the world like underneath it all to be everything you know peace on earth that we want Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the the chaos and the the anger and the all of the negative things that we associate with humanity the violence it all comes from an unhealed you know traumatic past situation trauma uh generational even it's it's deep and that's why that's healing is what I talk about all the time that's what our goal is here healing the individual to heal the world absolutely and and all of those things that you mentioned right comes from a lack of awareness of people being able to actually face it and look inward and and figure out what's going on and I think there's a lot more people now that are, are really starting to do that and I think it's it's so important right because when we talk about this ability of like what we really have control over in this world we really just have control over like our reactions and our choices and so you know really the best way to help promote that that peace and that love and that that kindness is to live by example and dealing with our own wounds and and our own healing first that's definitely all we can do (laughs) and a lot of our discomfort comes from wishing other people did differently or trying to get them to do differently or exactly being attached to how others are and the decisions they make but Mm -hmm. it really is just awareness of yourself because and I had to learn that the hard way when I started talking again in my late teens um very sparingly to only like family it was always very explosive like I didn't Mm -hmm. talk I didn't talk I didn't talk until something bothered me so bad that I just was spewing anger all over the place and of course that doesn't help anything nobody actually hears you yelling um Mm -hmm. so I had to again I, I it was a sense of shutting down at first I was like I shut down because I saw that nobody was hearing me it wasn't getting through it was a complete waste of energy and being angry uh is exhausting it's very exhausting so then I just turned my focus in on myself and started you know I realized all I could do I was like well I'll just show them I'll show them and here I am 17 years later (laughs) showing them and and it is just a, it, there's no grand gesture, grand thing that you do. It's just a day by day, one little decision, one little interaction at a time. And then, right, it's up to them to decide if now that you're showing them, right, are they going to, you know, are they going to follow the example or are they going to continue their own choices? And that's entirely up to them, right? It is. We have to hold those standards for ourselves. And though it's hard knowing that some people may fall away they may decide that uh, because you know again it's everyone is a hurt child trying Mm -hmm. to navigate this world that is stupid impossible like the way we created it or the way they created it for us let's be honest because uh, I didn't have any hand in this (laughs) (laughs) and uh, yeah it was here hundreds of years in the making before we even showed up so we're doing the best that we can but yeah so tell me about this shed method yeah so my signature shed method right we talk about awareness and how really we're not gonna make a change until we have that awareness and we start looking in and 
And I think that a lot of uh, people in general have a hard time, like, where do I begin? What do I, you know, what do I even do? I don't, I don't know how to listen to myself. What does that even mean? Right. So it just, it really is about bringing awareness. And then if you want to take further steps, you can. So in the shed method, S H E D, each one stands um, for something different and it's just an opportunity to check in. So I like to do use this method journaling because I'm a big proponent of, of journaling. I think that's really powerful, um, but it's also something that you could do just check in with your head. You know, when you wake up in the morning before you get out of bed, just really quickly go through it. So I'll walk you through it real quickly. So S is for sensation. So that's checking in with our physical body, just, you know, what's going on in the body. Sometimes we just like skip on to the next thing of what to do. We don't even listen to some of the physical sig uh, signals that our body is sending us, you know, my stomach's growling, I'm hungry, or like my legs are really tight today. Maybe I need to go for a little walk, stretch them out, these things, right? So just checking in with our physical awareness, our physical space. And then H is for heart. So checking in with our heart space, what emotions, what feelings are present today? You know, even if we can't name them or identify them, just like, how are we feeling? Uh, it can really help us to bring that awareness in. And then E is for energy. You know, what is our energy level like? Low, high. Uh, and then alongside this one too, I like to check in with the breath, right? Because that's a big indica indicator as well of some of these other things. Is my breath shallow? Is it deep? Am I breathing through? And then finally, D is for dialogue, which is our inner dialogue in our head. Where What are those thoughts that are going on? Is it, you know, uh, reminiscing about the past is it thinking towards the future are we here in the present what are those thoughts sometimes you know we play the same thought over and over again in our head all day long and is that powerful or not and so then once you check in there if you have time if you want to go a step further then you decide okay are there any of these things I would like to let go of in this moment are there any things that I would like to quote shed and let go of and release and then you have the power and the ability once you have brought that awareness to then make change yeah that is yes I am super excited that you have that because I agree completely that people don't listen to themselves and you're right. They don't, they're like, what do you mean? Listen to myself. And I'm, I'm, I can listen to myself talk. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, we're, our bodies are always talking to us day in and day out. They don't use words and we like to, as humans get hung up on words, but mm -hmm. words are a human thing, not a universe thing at all so if ugh, man words drive me and I love words I'm very fascinated <laughs> with words and languages but people get so stuck on the technicalities and energy is more of a feeling it's more of a general direction rather than a pinpoint specific word and yeah. um so a lot of us don't listen to our bodies for one until it's screaming and something's hurting and it's in pain. Mm -hmm. And I was actually, I taught a yoga class last night and I was talking about this and how we spend the most time with ourselves and our inner dialogue formulate or programs us to how we choose to be. And if we're not checking in with our body on a regular basis and we're only listening to it when something's wrong, then, you know, it takes seven good interrupts, positive interactions to remedy one negative interaction. So we need to make sure we're speaking to ourselves with kindness more often than or you really don't want to speak to yourself with any kind of non-compassion at any point in time. But, you know, we are all human and we all do fall into that from time to time. But if you're only paying attention to your body when something hurts, then that's the only interactions you have in that relationship with your body, then you're going right. to automatic, you're going to fall into the, oh, my body's crap. I have a crappy body. Why is this body always sick? Why is this body always hurting? Um, you need to just on a regular basis, find happiness. And, you know, like the example I gave last night during class was, uh, you can just randomly be like, hey, my left foot feels great today. Mm -hmm. If that's what you got, you know, if that's all you can right. find, then that's perfectly okay. We have, um, when we get stuffy and like congested and stuff, we're, we're sitting there like, man, I wish I could breathe. I wish I could. I wish my airways were clear, but when they are clear, we take it for granted and forget to be right. thankful. We don't even notice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, being aware of all yeah. of those things. 
And I think, and, you know, I teach this, um, maybe not in the same words, but I do the same thing as we, this shed method before we start any yoga class that I'm teaching, because, you know, bringing that awareness into the present moment. And one thing I always like to remind people is that when we are bringing this awareness in, we're also not bringing judgment with us. So, okay, just because, you know, my left leg doesn't feel so great today, that doesn't mean that there's a judgment or a story that has to come with it. It's just awareness. It's just noticing what's there, what's present. Um, And same thing, you know, when we check in with an emotion or a thought, we're not saying, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about how I have to do a million things. And then we start, you know, the, the key is to not then jump to that judgment where we say, why would I be thinking all of those things? I need to be present. I need to be here in yoga. Like I need, you know, and, and so just really, truly making it about the awareness of what's going on without that judgment um, and without that internal dialogue, as you mentioned of saying, you know, why is it this way? Or, does, you know, and, and just purely that awareness. And then we get to decide what's next. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't want to label things as good or bad or berate yourself for not being, doing, saying something other than what you did. It's Mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, if you didn't like it, then that's okay. You can be aware that you didn't like it and you can be like, well, next time that situation arises, maybe I'll do it better. Mm -hmm. Because we always get a chance to try again. Yeah. And we, and and right, we're never going to make that change if we don't bring that awareness in first, because we don't even realize it's a thing that's happening, right? I think the more that we can check in and the more that we can check in with ourselves and what's going on, certainly great, you know, at the beginning of a yoga class, like I mentioned, but also this is something I, I journal daily and is something I always like end my, my journal with. I just write one letter on each line and just like write a couple of words or thoughts. And the great thing about it with the journal as well is I kind of have a catalog of, of what that is going, what's going on. So then when I want to try to, you know, add something different to my routine, or I'm saying like, I'm noticing a lot that I'm very stressed out. Okay. Now I would like to, you know, change that. Right. I want to, I don't want to be as stressed out. So now I can experiment and I say, okay, well, what would it look like if now every morning, instead of, you know, scrolling on my phone, I decided to get up and go wash my face and take a walk in the morning, which is true life, real example. This is what I've been doing for the last few months. And then I can look into my journal and notice, is this helping? Is this making a change or is it not? It does happen to be making a change for me as I'm giving this real example, but perhaps it's not. And then you realize, okay, what can I try instead? And we have this kind of opportunity to experience with like experiment with those results, like right in front of us and have that catalog to move forward and backward from. Yeah, I love journaling. I'm a huge, huge advocate of journaling for a ton of reasons. Uh, For one, our brains kind of work in 5D. So like they're Mm -hmm. multiplying, dividing, shrinking, expanding all in the same moment. You can have 18 different thoughts about 18 different things all simultaneously. And that gets really overwhelming really quick, really anxiety inducing, really stress Mm -hmm inducing especially around the holidays you know we've got a thousand other things new tacked on to our uh, daily to-do list that isn't generally there for the rest of the year and uh, so journaling for one helps you take that 5d chaotic jumbled mess and lay it out in a 2d form where you can step back and be like okay this isn't as stressful as I thought it was because most of our stress and anxiety is completely made up it's it's Mm -hmm. things we've put on ourselves in any moment we can choose at any and that's why that's another reason uh being present in the moment and checking in with yourself is so useful because we think all you know I'm stressed out about this thing that is tomorrow well that's tomorrow's problem You know, Mm -hmm. if you can just like come back into this moment and be like, okay, what can I do about it right now? Nothing. I can do nothing about it right now. So is stressing about it helpful? Absolutely not. Is it making things worse? Absolutely is. Then you can kind of like step back and recalibrate and give yourself permission to just let it be what it is at this moment. So That's easier said than done, but that's where the meditation practice comes in. You know, that's a checking in with yourself as a meditation practice, just like sitting there and trying to silence your mind, which is ridiculous. That is such a misconception. (laughs) If you still think that meditation is sitting there and trying to silence your mind, you're wrong. I love you so much. Thank you for trying. Uh, we'll, We'll recalibrate that. 
But um, coming back to the journaling, it does absolutely give you a catalog because even the best of us who have been trying, and I say best of us is like, you know, we get up at 3 a.m. and take our cold showers and eat our kale and <laughs> whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever the trend is. Um, sometimes life gets busy and we forget these modalities that worked for us. You know, you forget mm -hmm. that drinking a, drink a glass of water every morning when you wake up helped you a ton you forget that taking a walk every morning helped you a ton because things got busy and it fell off your routine and now you're mm -hmm. frazzled and stressed out and you're like man I, I used to be there was this one point like three months ago I was so calm I was so peaceful everything was wonderful why why did I why I'm over here now I don't understand I forget like and you so going back to your journal you can look at and be like oh oh that's right I was doing this and then you just pick back up. I agree. And I think sometimes even it isn't even necessarily that like we forget. Right. But like you say, life comes up. Right. So I I know how powerful this like walk in the morning is for me personally. And then, you know, like a month ago, we went on vacation for a week. So the week leading up to it was lots and lots of work and then being gone. And then the week coming back, lots and lots of catch up. Right. So those three weeks, I, I don't know, maybe went for one walk and it just was something that fell off the priority list for a moment because I was like, I don't have time. And my brain is thinking, right. Okay. Accomplish all of these tasks and then you'll feel better. And it's not that I forgot that walk was, you know, taking a walk was good, but I think that it's more so um, realizing and remembering really how powerful it is not really that I forgot it is, but as just a reminder to look back and say, okay, this is something that you've told yourself before that is good and powerful and just um, try it again, pick it up, figure it out and and keep moving forward. Yeah, I definitely forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I absolutely forget about the things that help me and whatnot, which is honestly how I ended up online doing all of this content anyway, because I couldn't remember anything and which is part of the ADHD and whatnot. Sure. And, um, so I have to document everything. If I didn't, if I don't write it down or make a video about it or write a whole blog mm -hmm. post about it, I'm going to completely forget. And I go, I cycle through, I've had this, um, I've been up here doing this stuff for almost nine years now. So, you know, the, they need updating from time to time because sure. uh, links will break or no longer lead to where they're supposed to go. And then uh, the website itself will have an update. So you'll have to go in there and fix things that the update broke. And I always read through things and I'm like, oh, wow. So. I forgot that I was doing this three years ago. That, mm -hmm. man, that, was, that was a good time. I was, and then I'll just pick it back up. So it's kind of like yeah. a little time capsule for myself. It's it's yeah. my it's my public journal. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that's making me think too. I kept um, a specific journal out while I was going through yoga teacher training. And of course, during that time, your mind is just like a sponge absorbing so many things, right? And there's no way that you can remember everything. And then that is definitely something not necessarily of, actions I took, but like ideas and ways of thinking about things mm -hmm. that I, I love to go back to that journal. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like thinking about something in that way made such a difference for me. Like, how can I bring that back now that that's not just like one thing among, among a million things I'm learning, right? How I can, how can I go back into that one piece and pick it um, and take it and apply it to my life now? And I think that's really something pretty incredible to you about that journaling and that being able to go back and reflect as well as the ability to go back and and see your growth and see your transformation over years, over months, over, you know, being able to say, hey, I put in the work and here I can actually see the change that's happening and evolving. Yeah. Another thing that journaling helps, uh, I have like, a, I wish I could show everybody, but nobody's going to really see. I mean, they will if they watch the video. But anyway, anyway, um, journaling puts in perspective things that you felt like was a big deal and then you go to write about them and then you're like oh well this is kind of silly definitely the, the the idea back of you know we make things a lot bigger in our head than we absolutely do so people are all you know again coming back to our people don't know where to start they don't know what to do every single bit of everything they want the healing the positive future the 
true self all of it is just awareness it really is it's the first thing that it comes down to because you know like I continue to repeatedly hear myself say throughout this is nothing changes until we bring that awareness in these are all just tools and resources to be able to do that yeah and it's a I like your shed method because uh, it gives people a starting point because a lot of people get like, oh, I'm not a writer. I don't, well, you don't have to be a writer. You can just, it's just between you and you. That's it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to show anybody. You can hide it under your mattress if you want to. Um, most people are pretty respectful these days and don't go through people's diaries. But mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I think, I think key too, is you don't have to show it to yourself either. You know, we're talking yeah. about being able to reflect back and look on, and that's something I find really valuable, but if like, that's intimidating to you or, you know, the idea of like having to read it and look at it again, is intimidating. You don't have to, you know, it helps you to just get present in the moment. So use it for whatever tool you need. Yeah, rip it out of the book and burn it if that's what you yeah. need to do. It yeah. doesn't matter. But getting it out of your head and onto paper really does help you to, in a lot of ways. And it doesn't have to make sense. It can just be word jumbles because um, words hold energy. And you could totally just be like, mad, Kirsten, home. And like, it just, it, it makes sense to you at the moment. And that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. It's helping yeah. you sort out your head. Yeah. And you mentioned like words too, right? I'm not artistically inclined, but for those people who are, you know, maybe that's an easier way to express things too, is, is painting, drawing, you know, working with colors, working, you know, manipulating something with your hands and expressing your yourself in that way. And as you're doing that, as you're, it's still allowing your brain to like slow down and focus on the present moment as you're making those brushstrokes or you're making, you know, moving things with your hands or um, that mindful movement as well. Yeah. Any kind of artwork. I can look back at pictures I took and mm -hmm. I can tell you exactly. We can go again. My memory is crap, but mm -hmm. taking a picture of myself, I can look at 10 years later and tell you exactly what was going on during that time of life, what was in my head, how my emotions were, anything mm -hmm. I was struggling with. And that's another way that you can look back and see the progress that you've made. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So what about people who don't think they have time? Mm. Yeah, right. So we always say that we don't have time. I, I I, personally say that for so many things, right? We just find it's like these that stumble out of our mouth. Like, I don't have time for that or, you know, but it's really about, um, it's really about setting priorities. And I think that, right, as we, again, look at women specifically, um, not necessarily always women, but definitely more tending towards those people pleasing uh, activities. It's It's a matter of looking at it and it's a matter of saying, do I really not have time or is this just not my priority? And then asking yourself, okay, do I want it to make a priority or not? And if right now, you know, you don't want to make it a priority, you know, that's your choice, right? As we keep mentioning, but if you do want to make it your priority, can you find ways to slip this in? Right. So we talk about this shed method. That's something that, you know, is these small steps, right? We, we, we think about these like healing and transformative experiences that we can have that, you know, we maybe spend three hours a day journaling and doing yoga and connecting with nature. And that's all beautiful and well, if, you know, you do have the time, um, but it doesn't always have to be that way, right? It can be these small steps every day. And I think what's more important than being able to spend three hours a week is actually being able to show up for yourself uh, in a consistent manner, rather that's one minute a day, or rather that's an hour a day or whatever it looks like for you. And the great thing about the the shed method too, right, is it doesn't even have to take extra time out of your day. If you want to do that and check in with your, while you're, you know, in the shower, like I mentioned, if you want to check in with yourself when you wake up, before you open your eyes, um, before you get out of bed and, you know, just set your day with intention. These are all opportunities that, that don't take extra time. Or, you know, if you are ready for a little bit smaller, smaller step, but a little bit more deepening in, then you can start to invite these things in maybe five minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time. But I think what's most valuable and most important is actually, you know, making that commitment and showing up and building that trust within yourself because, you know, the, the three hours of all of these lovely yoga and journaling and, and outdoor things sounds great, but how often are you going to be able to actually make that commitment and show up for yourself? Um, and it's more detrimental to say you're going to do those things and not do them 
than it is to, you know, not set them there in the first place. So start small. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. It can be just one small thing every day. And if you're showing up and you're doing what you said, you're building that trust with yourself. So then, you know, when you, when your body, heart, your mind, all these things are sending signals, you're actually able to listen and be more mindful of your intuition because you've built that trust with yourself. And so you actually want to listen in. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a lot. And getting started is the hardest part of anything. And if you have it in your head that it you can't start it until you have those three hours to dedicate to it, mm-hmm. then you're going to put it off and put it off and avoid it. And exactly. But it, yeah, it doesn't, it because it it's, it's just awareness. We're practicing mm-hmm. awareness. At the end of the day, that's all we're ever trying to do because all of the practices, all of the healing mechanisms, it just always comes back to awareness. Awareness of the stories you're telling yourself, awareness mm-hmm. of the words that you're speaking, both in your head and out loud, awareness of the energy that you're putting out. Is it helpful or is it hurtful um I started my meditation practice as a new mom and Mm -hmm. man man nobody's got lack of free time like a like a new mom right right (laughs) so that's what I always tell people is that you can have awareness in any moment Mm -hmm. and that's all it is that's all meditation is is awareness in the moment checking in with how you feel Checking in with your thoughts, checking in with your energy, um, trying to trying your best to make the best decisions in any moment, practicing the pause, Mm -hmm. because um, most of the time when we make these decisions or use these words that we regret, you know, and beat ourselves up about, which we're trying not to do, we're we're just being aware of like, crap, I'm human. Look at that go figure who knew Mm -hmm. (laughs) never going to be perfect none of us are ever going to be perfect all we can ever do is try our best in every moment and um, a lot of that comes from our instant programming that kicks in the moment something happens so it's the reaction instead of the um what's it was the counter to that the reaction instead of I don't remember but practicing the pause gives you a moment to decide how to act decide Mm -hmm. how to speak instead of just letting your instincts take over which is often our harmful hurt programming Mm -hmm. until we rewrite that programming right by practicing taking that pause and changing that which is just another form of muscle memory because that's how we got here in the first place right Mm -hmm. Uh, you're you have an outburst um let's say road rage Mm -hmm. So, you know, and and every time this happens, your program and you have that outburst and you get angry. Every time you do that, you're programming your body to react that way in that situation. And so it's just, it's another form of muscle memory, your emotions and how you react to things. And uh, so practicing the pause, like taking a step back, anytime something happens, you just take a step back, recalibrate, decide the best and and man it hurts sometimes it literally hurts sometimes because you have all of these emotions and words and programmings that are trying to explode out of you and you've you've contained them and you're like no two wrongs don't make a right Mm -hmm. you talk yourself down an eye for an eye won't really the whole world blind you gotta be the bigger person you know whatever you gotta talk to yourself to calm yeah you mentioned the road rage. And that's actually something I've been trying to bring into my awareness a little bit more where I haven't quite caught myself to like not jump to the the anger right away. But I do notice that I'm starting to like right after it explodes, right? Then I'm like, I take a deep breath and I'm like, well, okay, that's not helpful. Like I'm usually it's, I, I have like a 25 minute commute to get to where I teach my yoga classes several times a week. And that's often when it happens. It's like in the morning when everyone's like trying to rush to work and it, and it's crazy. Someone cuts me off or whatever it is. And I'm like, ah! and then I catch myself and I take a breath and I'm like, okay, I have to go teach in a moment. Like, I don't need to be bringing this energy into my students. I don't need to be taking that out on them. Like, okay, let's just move on. That's not going to make my day better. Um, you know, this person's not going to hear me yelling at them anyways. It's not going to make any difference except for to make myself suffer more. So 
Um, I think just really important to note that like, even if you can't catch yourself before and being awareness that it just happened and being able to reset like pretty quickly is just as powerful too, I think. I agree. And I think uh, parents would take a lot from that as well, because man, do kids push our buttons. Sure. Kids are uh, mirrors to mm-hmm. our own childhood and trauma that we have and how our parents reacted and treated us. And a lot of times we don't realize what we have to work through until we're parents ourselves and working through it without a choice, you know, on our toes and having to keep mm-hmm. up. But it's super powerful to even even because again, we're all human and we're all going to fall into that programming at some point. So when you snap on them and you yell or whatever, whatever, you can afterwards be like, hold on, pause, apologize. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry that that happened. Um, Just be real with them. Be like, can we try again? That's not how I wanted it to go, you know? Yeah. And that's teaching them to learn that same way as well, you know? Sure. Do you have children? Um, I don't. I'm planning for children soon. So I'm sure I'm going to learn all of these lessons twofold. Um, <laughs> once again, you know, it's like one of those things, right, that we continue to learn and we continue to learn and we think we have things figured out and then we're thrown into a new situation and we're like, okay, it's not quite figured out yet. Um, but we have the tools, right? And we have those resources and we have those things at our at our arsenal so that we're ready and prepared and things aren't going to go perfect, but um, we get to learn all over again, which is awesome. Sure. It's important to know also that none of us will ever have anything figured out. It's all an illusion. We just like you said, we'll think we do. And then something mm-hmm. will happen and it, it'll all come crashing down around us and we'll have to build it up again. But you know what? Every time that happens, it becomes easier to build it back up. And that's why we're practicing because we don't want you to be discouraged by the fact like, oh, well, what's the point of this? What's the point of any of this? If it's, I'm always going to have, it's all always going to come crashing down around me. I'm going to think that I'm past this. And then you're telling me there's going to come a situation or a circumstance I'm going to find myself in to where it all like just reverts right back to my original program. What's the point? Well, the point is, is that, it's going to hurt less every time. Mm-hmm. It's going to be easier to rebuild every time. It's going to be easier to recalibrate. So whereas before it may have, you may have found yourself falling into a slump for months because of that one situation that happened. Now you'll, you know, next time it'll be weeks and then it'll be days and then it'll be hours. And then, mm-hmm. you know, it's, you get, you get more efficient at it just like with anything else just like with practicing anything else yeah definitely it's all it's all just a mirror of exactly the same thing right and and yeah maybe it's it's going to continue to happen but it's going to be easier and it's going to like build so much more trust and self-confidence within yourself because you take a look at it and you're like I know where I've been here before and I've been through this before and I can keep going and I think that's you know just as powerful as those those tools that we pick up along the way is uh that confidence that we build within ourselves of okay I figured it out before and I'm going to figure it out again this yeah and and that's not to say that you won't ever heal anything like there you know we're we're such a complex myriad of you know crap essentially that's (laughs) been drowning us for our entire life so whether that's you know, it, it's however old you are, you know, if you're 35, then you have 35 years worth of crap piled on top of you. Mm-hmm. But not only that, you have your parents crap and they're, how old are they? Are they in their sixties? Okay. Well then they, that's their mm-hmm. 60, 60 years worth of crap piled on top of that. And then, oh wait, you got grandparents too, don't you? And whether or not they're even in the picture, they still, they still pass down all of their baggage mm-hmm. onto you. And mm-hmm. So that's where a lot of people, you know, our generations get really, it's the age of anxiety, right? We're all anxious, bent out of shape messes most of the time. And this is why it's not our fault for one, you know, got to stop beating ourselves up about it. It's going to take a lot of digging to get all of us out of this because, you know, the internet is brand new. Mental health awareness is brand new. None of this was addressed until it got to Mm -hmm. us lucky mm-hmm. us 
but also lucky us right for real because the more that we do our own healing the more we step into our own power that's less stuff that we're shifting on to the next generation and it's less you know yeah they're still they've still got stuff but it's going to be less and it's going to be you know they're going to have role models and and things to look to um when they're starting to work through their own healing too yeah because this is how we heal the world just like um, we messed it up by hurt people hurting people and the ripples of everyone's actions going out and touching everybody, you know, until it rippled through the whole world, just thousands of years. And those are what we've been dealing with. But the more of us that can stop that and flip it around to where we're sending out healing ripples Every time we heal ourselves a little bit, that touches everybody in our lives, whether it's a close relationship with a friend or a family member, or it's just the lady at the convenience store. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah, definitely. And I think when you're starting to step into that and you are finding your healing and you are finding your power, like you don't even have the ability to like contain that. People can see it. People can feel it. And even if you're not even intending to influence someone, uh, you are, and people, people are seeing it and they're feeling it, even if they can't identify it, even if they don't do anything with it, they're, they're noticing. Yeah. Yeah. The truth of the matter is that every single one of us are hurt and dealing with a world that is painful and hard to live in. And once you realize that it's not just you that's in pain and hurt from past situations and circumstances in the world but it's every single person that you come in contact with also then it makes it a little bit easier for you to try to look for the positive and try to focus on the positive and try to be the change that you want to be you know compassionate kind loving accepting insert all of the words and if you're kind to some and if you if you go out and you radiate that energy to people only one of two things are going to happen. Either they're going to be like, oh man, she was really nice. Now I feel good. And I'm going to be nice to other people, you know, or they're going to be like, well, she, 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 her life must be wonderful. She must be having a grand time. I mean, it must be nice. And when people hit that ladder thing, then you can't take it personally because that's their own hurt coming mm-hmm. up. And even though we want to only stimulate the good and the positive in people by bringing up, but if we, if we irritate the demons inside people that brings them up for, it gives them the opportunity to work through them and heal them. And, you know, not everybody's willing to do that. Not everybody wants to do that. And well, I think everybody wants to do it deep down. They just don't realize Mm -hmm they want to do it they don't have that awareness right they haven't done that work to bring that awareness in yeah and it's uncomfortable hurts and that's exactly how healing starts out it hurts and it's uncomfortable and then you sit with it and it gets a little less uncomfortable and it hurts a little less and then you can there's all sorts of things that you can do to get through to the other end of it to where it feels better and how and like it's not so much of a big deal and journaling is one of those things and being mindful and practicing your awareness in the moment is one of those things and being like and noticing the stories that you're telling yourself in your head because we can we can drive ourselves absolutely insane with the well they did this to me and they shouldn't have and they're not even Mm -hmm. sorry and like that may be true but every time you repeat that in your head you're reliving it and perpetuating Mm -hmm. that pain so you have to change the story from something like well they did that to me and that they shouldn't have and like to well that's a thing that happened to me and it doesn't have to be a part of my everyday story it Mm -hmm. you can choose the like yeah that happened to me but I have decided that it is not going to affect how my day goes today because Mm -hmm. that is in the past and it's really hard for people to let go of the past especially when you have uh, a sense of your identity tied to the thing that happened Mm -hmm. yeah I think to kind of where my mind is going right now is 
the more that you connect in with your your wild self, your authentic self, your true self, the more that you really know yourself, um, those situations, you can take that step back and say, okay, what they're saying about me, what this action happened doesn't have to define who I am. I don't have to bring that into how I um, identify myself um, just because someone said something unkind to me or something happened in my life that, you know, made me feel like a fa- failure, right? Doesn't mean that that has to define me because you've already done some of that work to really know who you are. And if that doesn't identify with with who you want to be, then just, you know, they have the opportunity to let it go. Yeah, because we get to choose who we are in every moment. And you can be something, so you can be someone completely different every day if that's who you want to be. Life is the grandest opportunity to play pretend. It's, mm-hmm. it's all one big play and you can be the character of your choice. There's no director telling, bossing you around and telling you that you, you have to be the tortured soul. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, this thing happened to you so that you would be the tortured soul. You don't have to do that today. You yeah, can, if you want to, if you want to be brave today and you want to go like do things and choose things for yourself, go do it. No one is stopping. Literally, you can you can wake up today and be like, today I am a Viking. Yesterday, <laughs> you were a Hufflepuff. <laughs> Tomorrow, I might be a Ravenclaw. I don't know. A book sounds nice. I might curl up with one of those. <laughs> it's just day by day, whatever mask you want to put on. Because honestly, being your authentic self. You know, it, it, we get a little confused because, uh, or again, words, words, you know, these words mean this, therefore they cannot mean anything else. Well, that's not true. They can mean a whole ton of things all at the same time. And um, being your authentic self and this play pretend thing that I'm talking about doesn't, they're not two separate things. It's not a faking the Viking or faking the Ravenclaw or the Hufflepuff or whatever, whatever. It's just what aspects do you want to focus on today that you enjoy? Mm-hmm. Those are all your authentic self. If it, those are all your natural wild self. If you want to, you know, being, being tamed is being the same every day. Mm-hmm. Being wild is deciding who you want to be each day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And coming, bringing that back into that awareness of, okay, what do I need today? What do I want today? Mm-hmm. And being able to speak from there and choose from there. Yeah, yeah. Check checking in with your body, checking in with your emotions. What character do you need? Does your body need you to be today? Mm-hmm. The one who drinks water, the one mm-hmm. who makes good dis- food decisions, or the one that needs to take a nap. You know, mm-hmm. changes every day. All mm-hmm. true. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, tell everybody how they can find you and what you have available. Yeah, so um, you can pretty much find me, uh, Facebook, Instagram, website, all at wa- wildwandering.life. So instead of .com, .life, I'm on Instagram. Love to connect with you there. Um, I do have a Wild Woman Collective where we just, we take those small steps, as I mentioned, just 15 minutes a week to start checking in with yourself, start taking um, a little bit of journaling and a little bit of, of rewilding activity to just keep that momentum and a, and a great support group as well as a little bit of yoga in there too. So um, I'd love to have you check that out as well. And you can find that, you know, wherever you can find me. Awesome. And I'll link that close by so nobody has to look too hard. It's been so fun. Thank you so much, Santa. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really enjoyed this episode and it was jam-packed with information. This, this episode took me twice as long to transcribe into a blog post article because of all of the in-depth knowledge that we went through. This was great. I loved this. So if you did too, please rate, review, share, like, comment, you know, whatever you got going on it is possible with where you're listening to this at. And uh, if you can, come join us in the Patreon. It would mean the world to have you come hang out with us. It's a ad-free episodes video format. So you get all of the, you get to see our facial reactions and stuff. It really adds a whole nother layer to the whole experience. We have classes, meditations, journaling exercises, a lot of things in there for just $5 a month. That's patreon.com forward slash earth and water. The and is A-N-D spilled out. And uh, in the meantime, I'll see you next week. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Let me know if I can help you in any way. Namaste.